Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to our Librarian Tea Time today. I'm Carmen Nitsche. I'm the General Manager of CCDC Inc., which is a wholly owned subsidiary of CCDC uh, based in Boston and serving the Americas. I'm so glad all of you could join us today. We put together a practical and actionable program for you today to help make sure that your campuses are getting the most out of the CSD Enterprise access that you have. Uh, we'll be covering information about what's in the package, how the licensing works, and how scientists at institutions like yours uh, can use the content and the tools to advance their solid form science. CCDC has a long history of working with and supporting academic institutions, in no small part because that's where our roots are, uh, in academia at the University of Cambridge. We exist because of an abiding belief by our founder, Olga Kennard, uh, that the collection and expert curating and dissemination of solid form data would ultimately generate uh, advancements in research through generation of new knowledge. So the CCDC actually grew out of her crystallography group at the Department of Organic, Inorganic, and Theoretical Chemistry at the University of Cambridge. From 1965, the group began to collect uh, published bibliographic uh, chemical and crystal structure data uh, for all small molecules studied by X-ray or neutron diffraction. This collection was then encoded in electronic form in the late 1960s. And for those of us who uh, remember uh, Bill Town, for example, was one of the first people to be working on that project. I think when he finished his PhD, that was uh, one of the things he was working on. Um, and it became known as the Cambridge Structural Database. So if we look, so this was in the, uh, let's say late 60s, early 70s by 1980s. Uh, the CSD was being distributed to more than 30 countries. Uh, in 1987, we moved off campus, uh, not in, conceptually, not literally, but uh, and became a registered UK charity, which was committed to the advancement of structural science, carrying out research, education, and supporting the next generation of structural chemists. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 students. I was talking to Jason the other day. It's been it's put more than 50 students have been mentored um, through their PhD at the CCDC over the years. And we also have an active postdoc program. Um, this is all in keeping with our charity mission of advancing chemistry and crystallography for the public benefit. Uh, in 2013, um, the CCDC Inc. office was established to support. Uh, the U.S. and the, Amer the greater Americas. And I'm actually thrilled to say that a, a number of my colleagues are here today um, with us to, to share this information with you. Um, in 2016, um, the, uh, the license was expanded to not just be the database, but to include all the, all the software and tools that we are developing along the way. So, so um, your subscriptions include everything that the, CS, uh, that the CCDC provides. In 2017, we launched um, the Frank H. Allen International Research and Education Program, which we call FAIR. Um, and it was supposed to support solid form research and education around the world, regardless of means, through, uh, through three-year grants. Last year, the CSD tools and contents were accessible to over 70 countries. So it has been a rapidly growing enterprise. I'd like to introduce you to our team. Um, so as I said, I'm the general manager. Uh, we represent um, most of the outward facing functions at uh, CCDC. Uh, Yinka uh, is with us today uh, representing customer support. Jeff Langell is here today uh, from the material science side. Uh, Vera Prakova is here uh, do, for the discovery side. Um, Lee is not with us today. Um, uh, but he does all the business development. And the newest member to our team, for those of you um, who haven't seen us for a while, is Ashley Moreno, who is now our marketing person and who helps, among other things, set up events like today's. We have many PhD and master's scientists. Uh, their expertise ranges from crystal engineering, drug design, knowledge mining. We have a lot of database uh, experts. Um, and we carry out original research, uh, often in collaboration with academic and industrial uh, research partners. 
and we have a number of uh, published, uh, we publish uh, actively. And in fact, if you check out this link um, that we have here, you can see all of the peer reviewed publications that we published over the years. Um, the CSD also, we, over the years, if you look, it, it not only is the uh, repository for a lot of new science, but it, it is also mined to create new science. And you'll see also the change over time in how uh, science is done and where the, uh, where the uh, focus is. I mean, we, obviously, in crystallography, there's a, a heavy um, weighted citations there. But over the years, you know, organic chemistry, physical chemistry, inorganic nuclear chemistry, et cetera, et cetera. This is a, a really interesting paper put together, uh, uh, which uh, you can check out and see uh, how the CSD has changed over the years. With that, I would like to turn it over uh, to Yinka to start off the program for us. And thanks again for coming. Great. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. My name is Yinka Lutsingiojo, and I'm the user support scientist um, based in Oakland, California. And today I'll be going over uh, licensing and tools uh, that you get with uh, your campus license, your RCSD enterprise license, uh, what sort of product and services that covers, and how to access resources for you to be able to use uh, the CCDC tools. So a bit of licensing changes. We did replace our previous license uh, at the end of November of 2019. So November 2019, we've instituted this new licensing system. Uh, it uses it's compatible with any version of our software starting from 2020 and beyond. Um, uh, so some of the uh, benefits of this change is, it changes is that your licenses are no longer tied to a calendar year. So if you would uh, if it's easier for you to start your licenses in March, going on to February of the following year, you do have that flexibility. And you can also purchase your license for multiple years. So if you want to have a three-year license or more than that, that is an option that is available to you when you uh, want to renew your license. Um, unlike in previous years, your license information will no longer be sent to you because it no longer changes every year. Uh, so once you um, obtain your license for the first time, you will get that license and information, but subsequent renewal, we will no longer send out that license information. But you're always welcome to reach out to us at support or admin if you need that information. Uh, something else that, that has uh, occurred with this change in licensing is that users will not need to reactivate their software every year. As long as you have renewed your license before it expires, uh, the renewal and update on the customer end is uh, seamless. They will not have to reactivate. Now, there was a small bug in the system and reactivation was needed for this year, but we have worked on that issue. And moving forward, you will not need to reactivate your license. Um, however, the, the main CSD um, release at the end of the year will require a full uh, download and um, uninstall of the previous system. But since the license will work with any version of the software starting for 2020, you can wait a bit to upgrade or update your system. Um, it, the, whatever 2020 version you have will continue to work as long as your license has been renewed. So uh, for the customer end, it is still easy to set up. During the individual installation, you they will be asked to uh, enter their activation key, which is a 36-digit key. And they also have an option to activate the license after installation. So that is uh, pretty seamless also. Um, Again, there is no need for the individual user to um, even know that there's any changes because um, they don't have to um, update, they don't have to reactivate every year. Uh, there is an option to activate and run uh, the software offline. So if you have a machine that is not connected to the internet, you can still, uh, you can request an offline activation from us and uh, I can show how that happens in the next slide. We also have introduced an option for you to run your own license server. So if you have a campus-wide license, then you can set up a local license server um, and you, 
each user can point their machine to the license server. And this is very easy for the user to use because they don't have to uh, concern themselves with activation. The only management of licenses would be the license server, not on the individual machines. And you can also configure licensing with our software activation tool and can be configured for every user in the machine or every user in a group. So as I mentioned, uh, the installation and use on individual machine should be pretty easy. Um, during the installation, you can you'll be asked to enter your activation key, and there's an option to activate for any user that is using that machine, and you can just activate for the user who is conducting the installation. Uh, if the user will prefer to activate after installation, then there's a software activation tool that is typically located in this folder. And um, so they can activate online, enter in their activation key. They can generate an offline request by clicking on activate offline. And again, um, it, it, the instructions for how to create this request and send it to us is available here. And if you want to use the license server instead, you can use the configure license, configure local server option here. And again, all of this should be pretty easy, but we'll be happy to um, help you out on support. The current release of the software is 2020.3. And yes, that is the 2021 version of the software. Uh, if you um, would like to request download links for the software, those can be requested from uh, our website under the support and resources tab. There is a CSCS downloads. It does require an email address, customer number, and activation key. The customer number and act activation key should be provided to the um, site contact. And if you are the site contact and do not have this information, please reach out to us and we'll provide that for you. Another option that you have is instead of each user at a site to request the download, you as a site contact can download the installer and place it on a shared drive or somewhere where all the users can have access to. And uh, we do support um, that setup. So if you want to instead download and store the installer locally, you can do that also. Uh, so a bit more information on your license types. You can have a researcher license, which is available for two seats. There is a group license, which is six seats, and then campus license, which grants like unlimited um, licenses. And each license that we provide to um, academics is a CSD enterprise. And as I mentioned previously, once you um, Obtain your license for the first time, you get a customer ID or site ID. It is the same number. And you have the 36 digit activation key. And these numbers will not change. And uh, it will be emailed to the sign contact upon your first purchase. But subsequently, it will not be emailed. So reach out to us if you do need that information. So a bit more on what your license covers. First off, we have CSD Core, and this includes the main database itself, CSD, and some of our other uh, tools. So we have Mercury and Hermes, which are our visualization tools. We've got Conquest and WebCSD, which gives you an option to search the CSD both on your desktop and from a web browser. We've got mobile for geometry interactions. And uh, if you are comfortable using the Python API, you can basically carry out a lot of the same processes, but from a command line. And my structures is um, our option to be for people to be able to um, manage their structures. Um, you can use it to create your own in-house database and just keep track of all your structures. You don't have to submit it publicly to the database. You can have it uploaded and just have a better way of maintaining your own database. And then we have CSD Discovery, which uh, some of the main uh, tools that is added on top of CSD Core is Gold, which is our uh, league and docking software, Crossminer, which is our Pharmacophore based searching tool, and uh, Vera will be talking later about CSD Discovery. Next up, we have CSD Materials, and this includes Dash and more functionality for the API in Mercury. And uh, Jeff will be talking a bit about CSD Materials. So all of this is CSD Enterprise, and all of this is available to you with your license. 
we also have some professional services and as Carmen mentioned, we do have research partnership. We have um, uh, PhD studentships available. And uh, we also have some free tools under the CSC community. And again, these are freely available on our website and we have the um, educational uh, teaching database, which I'm gonna talk a bit about and uh, cell check CSD. So now that you have your license, you know what your license covers, how do you go about um, getting training on these tools? So first off, almost all of our tools, you can access the user guide from the, from the software. So for example, this is Conquest, and under Conquest, if you go to help and tutorials, you have options for uh, quick tutorials for, uh, for how to use, to perform certain functions in Conquest. Same as Mercury, if you click help and tutorials, you will uh, see some uh, tutorial options here. And in Mogul, help and help using Mogul would lead you to uh, the user guide and the tutorial section of Mogul. Next up, we have a documentation portal on our website. So if you go to our website under support and resources, if you click on documentation and resources, you would um, see this portal and you can select by resource type. So if you wanted a how to video user guide release notes, you can also filter by category. So if you're interested in what documents we have about medicinal chemistry, you can find that on the category or you could search by the product itself. So if you were looking for what materials we had for mercury, for gold, for cross miner, you can select that here and then click search and you see what materials we have available for that. Next up, we have a main training and educational resources section, which can be find, found under our community tab and training and educational resources. And we have um, first off, on this page, you can sign up for our education and outreach newsletter. So we do send this out every couple of months and you can keep up to date on what uh, trainings and what we have coming up from the education and resources um, team. First off, on this training and educational resources, page, we have some materials that is good for educators, useful for educators. So we have the teaching subset, we have some modules, and we have decor, and I'll expand a bit on that. So for our teaching structural data, we have this teaching database, which is a subset of our of the CSD. And what's in the teaching database are structures that are useful for uh, teaching certain chemical and structural chemistry concepts and these is available from our website to download and um, all the ref codes are in a CSV. You can look through that and you can also search on WebCSD specifically for the teaching database. We also have a, co a collection of teaching modules that range from high school level all the way to uh, university level. So these are uh, modules that we have created that can assist with teaching certain concepts in your classroom. And finally, we have DACOR. And DACOR is the database of educational crystallographic online resources. This was a project that was started by Mag Zadia at Temple University and has been donated to the CCDC. We started hosting and have been curating the uh, database since last year. It's a collection of crystallography lectures from different authors, authors that are free to use by other educators. Uh, we do have uh, information on how to credit which author has uh, donated the resource. Uh, if you would like to contribute or you know anyone who has materials that would be good for the community to have, they can get in touch with us at hello at CCDC and we're happy to include um, whatever resource they have. Um, for, the, for the database itself, you can access it either by resource type. So if you're looking for instructional videos, uh, slides, um, educational software, and then we also have the resources uh, arranged by um, topic. And so if you're looking for resources that we have over structure factor um, disorder or crystal lattices, you can click on any of this and it will show you all the resources we have so that, for that. So this is very useful for educators and um, we've actually gotten feedback on that. And we uh, also have re received more donations to this resource. Next up, if you want to get some training on uh, CCDC software, we do have a series of self-guided workshop materials and training and how-to videos. Uh, 
And so first off, if you click on, um, let's go back here. So if you click on the download a series of self-guided workshop uh, section, you will be brought to a page where we have all of our self-guided workshop materials um, arranged by uh, the type, so CSD community, or if it's CSD core, CSD materials, or CSD discovery. And if you click on, for example, CSD core, you'll see what uh, materials that we have available. We do um, ask for feedback as we continue to upgrade and improve on our materials. So when people use this, we do encourage for them to um, provide feedback for us. And there is a feedback link from this uh, page and also for each individual workshop, there is a feedback link. We have also been um, increasing the number of training and support videos we have. So we do have a YouTube and a LabTube channel. Uh, our videos range from how to do certain things in a software uh, all the way to recordings from our user group meetings and some of the virtual trainings that we have put on. So uh, again, you can access this from our training and educational resources portal and you will see all the videos. We have at least 90 videos available. In November of 2020, we held our first CCDC virtual training workshops, and we have also held a second series in April. And the first training that we had, it was a hands-on learning for uh, using Conquest and in Mercury. And the format that we've adopted for this workshop is a show one, try one, and explore more. So for the show one, we uh, provide a handout ahead of time so that um, users can see uh, attendees can see what we're going to go over and so we do give a presentation initially and there is a live demo of the software and then for the try one option they get a chance to work through an example for 20 minutes or more depending on what the topic is and then for the explore more section we either provide more information on what they can do in that tool or we uh, give them a challenge. For example, for our Mercury visualization workshop, we had them generate an image based on what they just learned. And we also sometimes have a quiz just to get an idea of um, how well they were able to follow along with the workshop. So our next set of virtual trainings will be in July. And the first one will cover geometry analysis and mobile. Uh, and then we're also having uh, a training on small molecular interaction using full interaction maps. And we're also going to be looking at metal organic structures using Conquest and Mercury. Um, you can register for all these events from our website under uh, news and events section. Do note that the time for the workshops vary just so we can give people around the world a different uh, a chance to be able to attend these workshops. And all of these are also recorded. We are also um, active on social media. So we have a series called Top Tip Tuesday where we provide tips on how to perform certain things within our software. And this is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And um, if you have a tip of something that you found useful uh, in the CSC portfolio, do reach out to us at hello at CCDC and we'll be um, happy to feature you as a Top Tip Tuesday. Some of the other events we have coming up, we do have a WhatsApp webinar every two months, and the next one will be in on July 22nd. So again, you can register on our website for this event and you'll be notified about them. And then we have our Discovery Science meeting coming up June 9th and 10th, and Material Science meeting September 7th and 8th. And with that, I would like to thank you. If you have any licensing questions, please reach out to us at support at CCDC or admin at CCDC. And if you have any questions about education and outreach or um, want to deposit some resources to DACOR, please reach out to us at hello at CCDC. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Siga. We have a couple questions. Um, from folks while we switch presentations over to Jeff, if you have a moment, Niga. Yes. Um, Ariel Andrea from the University of Wisconsin-Madison um, says that they have an unlimited campus license, um, but often users are given an error when they go to download the software, saying that we've hit a seat cap. Um, they've been told that this is to present, prevent unauthorized bulk downloading, but it ends up being difficult for the users um, because they often have whole classes that need software at once. Um, and they all go into download it at once. Um, yeah. Can the unlimited license truly be unlimited or do you have any tips for them? 
Uh, yes, it is unlimited. And what I would recommend for this is if you have a class that's going to need a bulk download, you can have one person download and store it on a shared drive and everyone can just access the installer from there. Um, if it is bulk downloading um, of structures from WebCSD, that will be a problem, but you can notify us ahead of time and we'll keep track of uh, IP addresses that way. But uh, if it's just downloading the installer, then definitely some a way to negate that would be to pre-download the installer and just make the installer available to the class. Perfect. And then um, Judith Carano uh, would like to know um, if the applications support the latest Mac OS Big Sur update. Yes, we it, our initial release, which was 2020.3, did not support Big Sur, but we have released the Big Sur compatible version. And so on Mac OS, that would be 2020.3.1. And anyone who's using Mac and currently has the uh, uh, non-compatible version, they can request the new download link and it would be for 2020.3.1. So yes, we do support Big Sur now. Okay, perfect. And I think that's all the questions we have at this time. So uh, we'll go over to Jeff with Matsai. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I am Jeff Langel, and I'm a research and application scientist um, working with the um, the Matsai division, um, and I'm based here in the, the United States. Um, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about what actually um, is in the database and also what some of our um, sort of matsci focused tools um, can do to uh, help you uh, and your um, colleagues' uh, research. So to discuss a little bit about what is actually in the CSD, um, <clears throat> It's the world's largest database of fully curated organic and inorganic, uh, or sorry, metal organic crystal structures. Um, and uh, we recently surpassed um, a million structures, uh, individual entries in the database. Um, each of those entries uh, has been curated and enriched by um, expert chemists and crystallographers. Um, that includes um, the addition of bibliographic information, um, chemical information such as uh, bond types, um, and all kinds of other uh, uh, important, helpful um, little bits of, of information added by experts. Um, the, the database uh, contains a, a really rich uh, structural diversity that I'll um, uh, touch on a little bit uh, deeper later, um, but that um, uh, diversity of information makes it very, very useful for um, uh, data mining. Um, so we can search for uh, different types of interaction patterns um, and uh, substructures. It also is um, very useful for uh, uh, geometric analysis, um, such as uh, intermolecular and uh, uh, intramolecular interactions. Um, so we can uh, generate statistics about what kinds of um, geometric configurations are usual. Um, so to give a little bit of context about um, the, the CSD, um, it is a database of organic and metal organic structures with over a million entries. Um, and uh, in comparison, there also exists the uh, ICSD, um, which is a database of inorganic crystal structures. Um, that has um, over 200,000 uh, entries. And recently we um, began an initiative to do um, joint deposition. Um, so it's now possible that when um, you have a, a crystal structure, instead of um, submitting it to um, either the, the CSD or the ICSD and then being told to, to go away and, and submit it to um, the other database because it's more appropriate, um, if you submit it to the CSD, um, we will take care of um, depositing it into the, the correct database for you. Um, you can also access the um, ICSD through our uh, web uh, interface. So you're able to search um, both the CSD and the ICSD um, at the same time. Um, the crystallographic open database also exists. Um, this is a database of organic, inorganic, metal organic, uh, and mineral structures, um, and that has um, over 400,000 entries. Um, the COD is not uh, fully curated, though, um, so you're you're missing out on a lot of the additional um, data that you uh, receive from our, our expert curation. 
Um, the PDB uh, contains over 120,000 structures, um, and that is a, a database for biological macromolecules. Um, we have lots of uh, interactions with the PDB, um, so you are able to um, uh, search for uh, potential uh, ligand small molecule interactions using some of our tools, uh, and Vera will discuss that uh, a little bit later. Um, finally, we have the, um, the ICDD, um, and that is a, a powder diffraction database, um, and we have interactions with that um, in that you can, uh, uh, we're building tools for um, searching for um, uh, structures based on um, their, their powder patterns um, using the, the structures from our database. Um, so there's uh, lots of interactions between um, our tools and other databases available in the field. Um, as I mentioned, we're over a million structures, um, and the uh, diversity and uh, complexity of the structures being submitted to the database uh, has been um, sort of increasing over the years. Um, we're seeing uh, a rise in um, uh, polymeric structures, so those uh, include metal organic frameworks, um, and we're also seeing um, uh, structures which have been obtained from uh, alternative uh, experimental um, uh, methods such as uh, cryo-EM. Sorry, my... Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, the the data is, is quite diverse. We have um, about 50% of the, the structures are um, organic, um, so they, they don't contain any um, uh, metal or, or sort of non-organic um, elements such as uh, aluminum, gallium, et cetera. Um, and the other half of the database is uh, metal organic. Um, so uh, the the database is quite evenly split between um, uh, metal organic compounds uh, such as uh, enzyme models, uh, magnetic uh, compounds, uh, metal organic frameworks, and uh, ca uh, small molecule catalysts. Um, and the other half of the database can include um, things as uh, diverse as explosives, protein ligands, agrochemicals, um, pigments, drugs, uh, uh, drug-like molecules, uh, etc. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the database is predominantly non-polymeric, although um, we've been seeing a, a rise in the number of polymeric structures over the uh, recent years. Um, and the database is also uh, pretty evenly split between um, single component compounds and multi-component compounds. Um, so when we say multi-component, we are including um, things such as um, salts, co-crystals, um, and um, uh, solvent-containing uh, compounds, um, such as uh, hydrates. Uh, so um, that uh, kind of concludes uh, a summary of uh, what we have in, in the database, um, and I'm now going to um, sort of explore what some of our um, software has to offer. Um, so as uh, uh, mentioned by my colleagues, um, we have uh, the um, CSD Enterprise, um, which is our sort of umbrella term, um, and that includes uh, CSD uh, Core, um, CSD Discovery, and CSD Materials. Um, so I'm going to focus on a little bit of uh, what is included in CSD Core and what is included in CSD Materials. Um, CSD Core includes our um, uh, the database itself, along with um, Conquest and WebCSD. Um, which are both tools used to um, search and interact with the database. Um, CSD Materials is our um, software suite, which is uh, sort of originally designed for um, uh, helping to uh, sort of analyze and um, uh, characterize uh, molecules that are intended to be uh, drugs. Um, so this is useful for um, molecules which are uh, already crystallized. Um, so uh, CSD Core includes Conquest, um, and this is a desktop application for um, retrieving um, entries from the CSD. Um, it allows for very advanced uh, searching of the database, um, and it provides um, a full range of, of bibliographic um, and uh, metadata um, for each entry. 
Um, it allows for uh, very complex searching, including um, a searching of 3D parameters. Um, it has a, a wide variety of different uh, search fields. Um, you're able to search uh, based on uh, experimental properties such as the, the temperature of data collection, um, the pressure, um, the radiation source, source such as if it's um, a neutron or x-ray, um, and the, the quality of the, the data. Um, it allows for bibliographic searching, such as the, the author, um, the year of publication, or the, the journal um, that the structure was published in. Um, it allows for um, structural searching, so this includes um, a two-dimensional uh, sort of um, diagram search, um, and this can be for um, a full structure or it can be for a, a fragment. Um, and you can also include three-dimensional terms. Um, so if you're looking for non-bonding interactions um, with specific parameters, um, you're able to define those quite easily um, with this interface. Um, you can search based on um, other uh, kind of simpler terms such as the, the composition. Um, so anything that contains certain elements or um, has a certain formula. Um, crystallographic terms such as the, the size of the unit cell um, or the um, symmetry properties. Um, and we also allow for generic text searching. Um, so if you are interested in um, entries which contain um, certain uh, words such as um, natural products or the like, um, you're able to uh, quite easily do that um, with the interface as well. We also allow for um, searching um, through uh, the web. Um, so you can use our uh, web CSD, or, um, also known as access structures, um, to search. Um, this has a, a more limited set of um, search features, um, but uh, you can um, do this directly in the browser, including um, on your uh, smartphone. Um, this uh, returns very up-to-date information, um, whereas uh, Conquest, um, uh, is updated several times throughout the year. Um, WebCSD is updated on a sort of rolling basis. Um, so in order to see the, the most um, up-to-date recent structures, um, you can uh, access those directly through here. Um, once you've found your, your structure of interest through here, you can also export the, um, the, um, uh, the SIF from here as well. Um, so now I'm going to uh, discuss um, some of the software available through um, the CSD materials um, suite. Um, and this is a, a toolkit designed for um, aiding in um, solid form um, informatics, uh, primarily for uh, solid form risk assessment, um, which is uh, essentially um, determining um, the likelihood of the existence of um, other polymorphs of your uh, material of interest. Um, although there's a, a wide variety of applications that um, you can use these, these tools for. Um, the uh, uh, suite includes, um, uh, so just to sort of give a, a rundown of what some of the, the options in the, the software are, um, we have a, a crystal packing similarity, um, tool, which allows you to uh, uh, quantify the similarity between um, uh, two or more crystal structures, um, uh, which can be very helpful for um, trying to um, find uh, structures which are similar to yours. Um, there is a, a motif, uh, mo uh, sorry, a motif search um, and a packing feature search. Um, so this allows you to define um, three-dimensional arrangements of um, atoms or molecules, um, and then search for that particular three-dimensional arrangement. Um, so we see here that um, this stacking of rings with uh, chlorine atoms has been defined, and um, uh, you can search for other structures which contain this particular um, stacked set of uh, fragments. We have a, a conformer generator. Um, this, so this uses um, uh, statistics from the CSD in order to generate um, realistic looking molecules. Um, this is uh, very useful if you only have a, a two-dimensional structure and you would like to see what a likely three-dimensional arrangement might be. 
Um, we have full interaction maps. Um, so this uses um, statistics from the database in order to see where the most likely sites of um, donor and acceptor atoms in your structure are. Uh, we have hydrogen bond propensity. Um, so this is one of our um, uh, sort of most impactful tools in uh, terms of um, uh, drug solid form risk assessment. Um, this is, uh, is used to uh, identify more uh, p potential more stable polymorphs of uh, molecules. And I'll discuss that in a little bit more depth here in a moment. Um, we have tools for analyzing um, hydrated molecules, um, so looking to see if um, the hydrogen bonding patterns of, of molecules um, are, uh, or sorry, of uh, hydrates are, are usual or not, um, and also to see what sorts of volumes um, uh, hydrates are taking up in a, a unit cell. We have tools for um, uh, doing molecular complementarity, so determining if a particular molecule is likely to co-crystallize with um, a, a different molecule um, based on uh, some descriptors that we've developed. Um, and we also have tools for um, looking at um, the theoretical um, morphology, so the actual, um, what the, the shape of the actual crystal that a, uh, a molecule might form uh, would look like. Um, so to, to give kind of a, an example um, based on um, sort of a, a real world uh, use case, um, we have a, uh, a pharmaceutical um, health check, um, as we call it. Uh, in this uh, sort of workflow, um, we, we take um, uh, drug candidates and we use our, our variety of tools in order to say how likely those um, um, candidates are to form stable polymorphs. Um, in this uh, example, which I think this is a little cut off here, uh, but um, uh, available on our, our website, um, we have uh, a, a really good summary of um, what was shown in this paper, but um, essentially three pharmaceutical compounds were assessed for their, their stability using our tools. Um, and the reason why that is important is because different um, polymorphs can have different solubilities and stabilities. Um, so if um, a molecule undergoes a, a phase transition into a different polymorph, um, your drug um, tablets can potentially uh, collapse um, or uh, be less bioavailable um, than you might expect. Um, Follow-up experimental work was, was done uh, based on our uh, recommendations um, in order to uh, confirm the, the findings as well, um, which you can read about um, in more depth in the paper. Um, but to, to briefly summarize um, some of the findings from, from this, um, we have this uh, Marivorac um, compound, which is a HIV viral entry inhibitor. Um, and uh, in this case, the, the first crystallized uh, form um, exhibited this um, sort of three-centered hydrogen bond, um, which uh, was kind of deemed unusual. Um, we searched our database for similar um, sorts of fragments, um, and we found that um, the uh, donor acceptor distance for this was actually um, very unusual um, when compared uh, against a histogram of, of similar um, uh, hydrogen bonds. Um, so that was a, a clue to, to go back and look for um, potential other uh, polymorphs. And uh, experimental screening found a, uh, another polymorph um, which uh, actually um, did not exhibit um, this um, three-centered hydrogen bond um, and was more uh, was deemed more stable. Um, so in this case, a more stable um, uh, drug polymorph was found um, based on uh, analysis of the the CSD. Um, another example from that paper was this uh, crisotinib, um, and this is a, a lymphoma kinase uh, treatment. Um, in this case, uh, there were no alternative forms identified through uh, extensive screening, um, and hydrogen bond propensity um, calculations were performed. Um, in the case of hydrogen bond propensity, um, we 
generate a large number of potential hydrogen bonding networks, um, and then we score each of them based on um, what is known as the, the coordination uh, score and the, the propensity score um, for the, the donors, acceptors, and, and hydrogen bonds. Um, and in the, the case shown, um, essentially, uh, uh, without going into um, too much technical detail, um, compounds which are found in the bottom right of this chart um, score very well in terms of both propensity and coordination. Um, and in this case, the observed form was found um, as the, the bottom rightmost compound. Um, so this suggests that this compound uh, is the is in its most stable um, form. Um, and that agreed very well with um, what was seen experimentally in terms of um, solvent uh, screenings for, for alternative polymorphs. Um, and so that's just um, two examples of, of how our tools uh, can be used to um, help um, research, in this case, um, pharmaceutical research, although uh, it can be used in a, a wide variety of uh, uh, different fields uh, of uh, solid form. Um, uh, crystallography and chemistry. Um, but yeah, I think I probably have a, a, a bit of time for, for questions. Hey Jeff, yeah, we actually do have one question um, from Judith Carano. Is there a limit on the size or molecular weight of polymeric structures? Um, size and weight of polymeric structures. So, uh, Um, you mean for these tools in particular? Um, potentially, let's see, uh, in the database, maybe for deposition. Oh. Yeah, um, so I don't have on hand a particular um, a cutoff. Um, I'm sure if we do run into any issues with, um, in terms of the, uh, the file format, that is something mm -hmm. that we can, um, we can, we can, handle somehow. <laughs> um, so there's no sort of um, official limit on that. Yeah, if, if something ends up being too big, we will find a way to, to handle it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, well, we'll go over to Vera. I think that was our only question. Yep. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Vera Pritkova. I'm a research and application scientist uh, in the drug discovery team at CCDC. And today I'm going to give you an overview uh, uh, of the discovery suit. Ah. Okay. So um, our discovery suit is comprised of several uh, main packages. Uh, the first one being gold. Um, gold is our protein ligand docking uh, package uh, that can be used for docking and virtual screening. Uh, then we you have access to CSD cross miner. Uh, it's a tool that allows to interrogate the CSD and the PDB for common interaction patterns. Um, if uh, one doesn't have uh, access to the structure of the protein, uh, one can follow the ligand based virtual screen workflow. And that also has access to um, the CSD confirm generator and the ligand overlay. Uh, all of the above tools are available through our GUI interface, but also one can use um, CSD Python API. Uh, so uh, it's uh, you can run all of those workflows in the programmatic way. And also you can use the field-based ligand screener uh, through the Python API. Um, we also have a set of the knowledge-based tools uh, based on, our, um, on the CSD. Um, that includes uh, Superstar, so you can analyze, predict, and understand protein and ligand interactions using Superstar. So where would our tools fit uh, inside the drug discovery pipeline? So in the stage of the drug uh, target selection, you can uh, locate and characterize protein ligand binding sites with uh, fragment hotspot maps, so you can assess uh, pocket drug ability. Uh, then at the hit identification stage, you can use uh, gold and cross miner and other tools to 
uh, do the structure and ligand-based virtual screening. So you can mine the CSD and the PDB, as well as any other uh, database for common interaction patterns and scaffold hops. Um, then at the hit to lead optimization stage, uh, you can assess how changes affect binding, also using gold and cross miner. And at the lead optimization stage, uh, using several tools, uh, several tools, you can check the impact of uh, changes with uh, docking post prediction. Um, so let me now dive into uh, each separate tool and uh, show you how uh, it works. Let us start with gold. Uh, gold stands for genetic optimization for ligand docking. It is a genetic algorithm for uh, docking flexible ligands into protein binding sites. Uh, some of the key aspects of gold in, uh, include its uh, versatility. It has four different scoring functions, which means that you can have um, a greater chance of finding a protocol that suits your particular system. It can deal with the uh, key water molecules, um, rotating, translating, and turning them on and off during the docking run. It also has several features for dealing with um, protein flexibility. That includes rotatable side chains, uh, soft potentials, and ensemble docking. Um, it also contains several different uh, constraints uh, that includes hydrogen bond constraint, hydrophobic regions, scaffolds, and similarity constraints. Um, one can use uh, gold either through the GUI interface from command line or from the Python API interface. Also, in uh, one of our uh, latest releases, we make a gold available um, uh, to run on the cloud computing resources as well as um, uh, local clusters. So there are usually when comparing uh, various docking packages, there are publications that try to run them on uh, uh, one system or several systems uh, and see uh, what is the best performance. Uh, typically, Gold prefer, performs really well uh, comparing to other docking packages. Uh, one of our best performing scoring functions is ChemPLP, and we use that as a default scoring function, since it's um, both best performing and uh, is uh, the fastest one. Uh, we allow to um, make uh, modifications to the gold setup uh, in the Python API, um, so all the constraints and configurations could be set up uh, through Python API. But also we allow for various different integrations of gold. And recently we made available uh, the NIME uh, workflow in gold. So one can start with um, a set of uh, ligands uh, in 2D, so in smiles, uh, and then convert them to three-dimensional structures and run gold using um, such uh, a workflow. To provide you an example uh, of how Gold works, uh, I'm showing here a recent publication from uh, Tel Aviv University. Here, the virtual screen identified potential drugs to repurpose against COVID-19. Here, the Campbell database of drugs at various stages of clinical trials was filtered and the resulting library screened in silico using non-covalent and covalent methods. Gold was used in uh, non-covalent virtual screening and identified 21 hits. The lead compounds were, went on to be tested um, by protease inhibitor activity assay as part of the COVID moonshot initiative. And this found one compound, um, a molecule in phase two for treatment uh, of COPD and identified by gold so it showed 37% uh, inhibition at uh, 50 micromolar concentration. So this uh, is one of the applications that we offer. Uh, moving on to the other ones, uh, CSD CrossMiner uh, is the result of a collaboration between CCDC and Roche. 
Um, it is an interactive uh, tool for pharmacophore based searches of structural databases. So this is the tool to mine the uh, PDB and the CSD. It allows to retrieve valuable information that can be used um, in a drug design project. We provide um, databases ready for searching containing protein ligand binding sites from uh, the entire PDB. Um, you can also have the ability to search your own structural database. The databases uh, we have are annotated with information related to the crystallographic structure. Uh, for example, the CSD ref code, um, EC number, PDB code, type of molecule, resolution, protein target, and many other annotations. Those annotations can be used not only to retrieve information about the structure, but also to filter the results. Um, for example, to retrieve only specific types of structures that match the pharmacophore query. Um, moving on to the applications, uh, CSD CrossMiner is a very powerful tool in drug discovery process. So it allows to determine common, common protein binding sites uh, in PDB structures. Uh, it lets uh, you determine structural motives um, that are able to interact with similar binding sites and evaluate which ligand motives have similar protein interaction patterns. It that lets you shed some light into the cross pharmacology between protein targets, as well as into the selectivity of bioactive small molecules um, and its further implications to toxicity and adverse reactions. Um, Accessing all this information about protein and small molecule interactions allows to generate new ideas, for example, how to design novel motives that mimic established ligands. Um, this can help to move away from an already patented chemical space or to improve physical, chemical and pharmacokinetic properties. How do you uh, build a pharmacophore uh, within a CSD cross miner? So each entry in the database uh, of molecular structures are annotated with features that can be defined as an ensemble of steric and electronic features that characterize a protein or a small molecule. Uh, those features are defined using SMARTS patterns and are stored in feature database. So the SMARTS patterns um, and the feature definitions are user editable. This means that they can be tailored or extended by the user. And in addition, uh, new feature definitions can be easily created and applied in the fly. For example, you can have um, a charge ligand. Um, then the user must come up with a SMARTS pattern matching uh, the feature type. Uh, the pharmacophore query is defined using some types of feature with a tolerance sphere, where the radius of the sphere reflects the uncertainty in the position. And the larger is the sphere, the larger the uncertainty is allowed for a match. Um, as for features, pharmacophore points can be either single points or directional, uh, which means that they're defined by two points then the pharmacophore query can be further customized by defining the nature of the pharmacophore point and by applying the constraints. Um, so let me provide you uh, one example of an application. This is a publication where the authors were interested in the heterocyclic ring system produced by the three-component gropke blackburn Biennemi reaction as a possible pharmaceutical scaffold. They designed and synthesized a library of uh, substitute products and solved the structure of one to confirm its structural properties. Here, um, CSD CrossMiner was used to identify binding patterns as uh, uh, it is seen both in their obtained crystal structures and in the literature to find uh, similar structural motives in the PDB and to generate uh, new ideas for further lead optimization and scaffold hopping. 
So those uh, two tools that I just described, both uh, could be used in the structure-based drug design, but if you are missing uh, the protein structure, you can go with the ligand-based virtual screen work framework. And I'm going to show you um, uh, in a few brief details uh, how this works. So the uh, virtual screen workflow uh, works as follows. We start uh, with a set of known active ligands uh, with the assumption that uh, these actives bind to the same pocket of the protein and have a common binding mode. Then we generate a set of diverse, highly probable conformers uh, using a conformer generator. Then we generate plausible ligand overlay hypothesis from these conformers, um, which are plausible putative common binding modes. Um, this ligand overlay hypothesis can then be used um, to do the screening of a larger library of ligands uh, using the field-based uh, ligand screener that we provide uh, in Python API. To go over some of those steps, uh, this is the brief description of the CSD conformer generator methodology. Here, the conformers are generated based on the data stored in the CSD, and the CSD data uh, allows us to uh, construct uh, realistic low-energy conformers of small molecules. For the ligand overlay methodology, um, we use these conformers um, to generate the overlay. Um, and then th here the problem is underdetermined. Therefore, many different overlays can be constructed. Um, then we filter those overlays, optimize them, and those overlays can be used as the entry point for the field-based ligand screener. So the ligand uh, field-based ligand screener uh, creates a similarity field. It creates the fitting points, uh, adds excluded volume, and screens uh, the ligand conformational ensembles against the overlay query uh, and scores this. Um, and the, then it returns the ones that best match the query. As an example uh, of uh, this workflow, uh, in this work, authors used the CSD ligand overlay to develop pharmacophores that may inform new bio-inspired competitive inhibitors with uh, pharmaceutical implications. Here, PAPA is, in a, is a substrate for two catalysts involved in the shikimate pathway, uh, which is essential for plant and fungi metabolism. So the researchers uh, performed a literature survey of 28 PAPA derivatives and then analyzed the selectivity and affinity of the compounds using molecular docking, uh, pharmacophore prediction, molecular dynamic simulations, and uh, binding free energy calculations. As part of the process, they used the CSD ligand overlay tool to determine the pharmacophoric groups of the selected ligands. Specifically, they generated conformers for each PEP derivative using the conformer generator tool and then performed a pharmacophoric prediction using the ligand overlay application. Here, the researchers optimized the overlay results based on volume and hydrogen bonding, as well as hydrophobic coplanarity and internal energy scores. So this was an application of the um, ligand overlay uh, and uh, a field-based uh, ligand screening workflow. I would like to show you the last uh, chapter of uh, our discovery workflow. Um, we try to extract the information from the CSD and the PDB to uh, better inform the uh, drug discovery process. And for that, uh, we offer the full interaction maps. Um, this is built on top of the library of intramolecular information that we call ISOSTAR. Here, the data are derived from the CSD and the PDB. This allows to gain immediate insight into the interaction preferences of your small molecule. So you can obtain the evaluation of intramolecular packing of a crystal structure using the all interaction types. Another tool we offer uh, in terms of our knowledge-based tool is called Superstar. 
uh, superstar allows to put the probe uh, inside the uh, protein binding site and analyze the interaction preferences for the protein binding site. So we can extract uh, the knowledge-based information from the CSD and the PZB to find where uh, small molecule donors, acceptors, or hydrophobic groups would bind inside this uh, binding site. Those maps constructed uh, in SuperStar can then visualized, be visualized in Hermes, our protein visualizer. As an example of the application of SuperStar, I wanted to show you this uh, publication. Here, the authors uh, use CSD discovery to evaluate the aldose reductase inhibiting uh, properties of synthesized green fluorescent protein. Model uh, uh, so they modeled the compounds uh, and their analogs. Um, the aldose reductase inhibitors are used to treat uh, complications associated with diabetes. Um, here, the authors used the GFP uh, chromophore model to synthesize uh, imidazolones and then measured the in vitro ALR2 inhibitory activity. So they used, um, uh, so they completed the docking experiments with gold on 13 compounds into seven different protein structures obtained from the PZB. And this helped them uh, determine the best pose for each experimental ligand. Then they used the superstar, uh, where author generated interaction maps within the protein binding sites uh, based on the crystal structures in the PZB. For example, they were able to visualize the knowledge-based protein ligand interaction area within the active site of the protein. And they were able to verify the role of the hydrophobicity in the experimental ALR2 inhibitory activity in six of the 13 experimental ligands and analogs. So, um, this completes my uh, brief overview of the discovery. With this, I'd like to thank you. If you have any questions or if you think that you would like to um, communicate with us or collaborate on any of the projects, uh, feel free to reach me. And this is my email address if that's necessary. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Vera. So we're a little over, uh, and we don't seem to have any questions. But uh, that doesn't mean if you if you leave here and uh, have a, a question, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us directly. Um, you can uh, you can send a note to support at ccbc. That candidate. I'm now saying it wrong. <laughs> ccbc.cam.ac.uk. Um, and I want to remind you again, uh, as Yinka pointed out, we have lots of events coming. And if you check out our events page, you will also be able to see uh, anything new that's, that's scheduled. Um, so we leave you with our emails and our uh, great thanks for coming out. Um, if you thought this was useful and you'd like us to do it again, we would also welcome your uh, topics that you would like us to cover next time. Thank you again for um, signing up and for joining us today, and we hope to see you soon. Have a good summer. Take care.